Hello. I know we're a little bit late starting, but that's okay with me. I really enjoyed watching that last stream, so that was fantastic. I'm going to grab a chair or a stool to sit on real quick. Well, everyone migrates over. Hello. I'm not wearing kimono anymore. <laughs> I'm not wearing kimono anymore. Oh, go great. Let's just have my volume where I can hear it. I don't want that. And I might have to change the camera a little bit. I'm going to put that over here. Oh my gosh, DK Koba, hello. And I don't need to be wearing this, my uh, Mr. Rogers <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm drinking, but I hope you got a student. Hold on a second. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone collects over here. So... I'm going to be doing this at half scale, and I know this camera is a little futzy. It's been dropped a couple times, so we're just going to do what we got. Um, I'm going to do this at half scale. <laughs> I will be sewing along, but not this project. That's fair. Um, because I'm going to try and make it so you guys can see everything we're doing in this area. Um, whereas if we were doing, you know, a full-size skirt with a 80-inch sweep and a 20-inch length, it might be a little big. So hopefully a half half pattern will be good. And if anybody um, tuned in earlier to the kimono panel, I've already updated some of my favorite brands and updated some of my favorite Instagrams on that link earlier. So feel free to go check that out later too. I spent some time while I was lurking all of the other streams, which have been freaking awesome. Can I just quickly thank everybody who participated either in the chats or who was a streamer today. I always want to say thank you to all you guys because it was a fantastic event. I am the last stream today, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed all of it. I don't know if you turned in just one stream or if you watched all of them. I think it was pretty fucking awesome. So I am going to be doing this at scale. And fair warning, this camera itself could can sway a little bit, and I'm, I'm hoping to not make you super motion sick. I apologize if it does get a little wobbly as we're moving around the table. So I'm gonna get some paper here in a second. But I'm gonna let everyone get in here and see what we're doing. So to start out with, um, these would be like the measurements that I would be using um, for realsies. And again, we're doing this at half scale so that we can get all this into the frame. Um, so if you have a natural waist, um, this is like pretty much the natural waist of my dress form is 27 and a half. Um, you wanna add a little bit of ease, about half an inch, just that's ease is breathing room. Um, I know if a lot of you do so that you probably have experienced that commercial patterns add a lot of ease. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do what I would consider reasonable amount of ease. You do want a little breathing room so that, you know, when you sit down um, and you kind of squish as gravity does, you can breathe. Um, some garments might be more fitted, like if you're wearing a corset and have like a lot of structure underneath, you don't need to have as much ease. Sometimes you want something called reverse ease when you're doing something like a knit, because you want it to be form-fitting and stretched to fit the body. But um, for the purposes of this one, I'm going to add half an inch of ease. So for our half measurements on our garment, um, I did essentially did this at 28. 28. So we ended up with 14, 10, and 40 out of these numbers here. And I hope you guys can see this okay. Um, so before we get started, um, <laughs> I'm enjoying watching the chat. It's quite amusing. Um, when we're talking about like a dress or a skirt, and I know that we're not doing like, this is my really horrible crappy sketch really quick. Um, this will be the front and the back. Um, what's really important to note is that the waistband um, area for any skirt or dress, um, you actually want to kick the side seams back a little bit on the body. And I'm going to stand up really quick. And maybe you can see me on the small thing. So if I put the side seam of a garment at actually where half is on the body, it's actually a little bit more forward than you think it is, visually speaking. And it's not very attractive. <laughs> um, it just... It makes you look a little weirdly wide to be able to see the side seam really towards the front of the body. So typically speaking in fashion, we tend to kick 
the side seam of a garment back a little bit um, just so you have a little bit more visual wrapping of the front of the garment um, so we're going to do some of that I don't know if I was really on screen for all of that um, so when I go to take the waist measurement I'm going to take it in half right because you have a front and a back so that would be seven inches for both sides but I'm going to um, essentially take uh, what would be an inch in the full garment, but then we're going to do a half inch because everything is halved in this, right? And I'm going to add it to the front. And I'm going to take it away from the back. So this is going to be the front waistband and the back waistband, essentially. Those are the measurements that we're going to be using. Um, and that uh, is going to also affect how we do the sweep. Um, but we, you do actually, another thing you do want to do is add more fullness to the back of a garment because you got booty. You are more three-dimensional in the rear than you are in the front. And if you add too much front fullness, it just kind of comes off as weird shape. I've done this by accident before where I just didn't have enough fabric to add to the back. It's not a good balance. You always want to have more fabric towards the back in the full sweep of the skirt. So we'll take some of the sweep and put it uh, into the back. The sweep is just the, the full width of the hem. So those are just some like tips and starting kind of where we're, we're going to start from when I get the piece of paper out and start cutting things up. So we're going to do this completely as a flat pattern today. Um, I think maybe you've seen me do a draping panel before. Um, you can do this on a dress form. Um, it's a little bit harder, I think, personally. Some, like, and I've said this before that some pattern stuff is easier, easily done. Um, yeah, right. Um, I find that some stuff is more easily done in flat pattern than it is in draping, and vice versa. So it's good to be able to be versatile and do both of those skills. So I'm gonna get some paper real quick. Um, grab my paper scissors. but you're gonna see the camera in my face, I'm sorry, but. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start with patterning the front essentially. And let me start off with a full pattern. So the front we said is gonna be seven and a half inches. And this is gonna be without seam allowance. You add seam allowance to your patterns when you're done. Oh my god. Thank you so much for the, the subscription. <laughs> it's always funny to do these panels um, on my personal Twitch because I do sometimes scream. Some people are, are just regular viewers and some of you are here specifically for Ursa Major. It's really funny. Oh my god, so many. Is this just gonna, you're just gonna make it forever? Did you just do that? <laughs> okay. It's gonna go forever now, I'm sorry guys. Um, so half of seven and a half. It's gonna be three and four. God, I'm so bad at math right now. So three and a half, three and three quarters. Yes, three and three quarters. <laughs> um, it means that you can use my special chat thing now, guys. You can you can use my emote. I have a personal emote, which is just my dumb face making dumb faces. 
So now you guys at, who are subscribers can use my dumb emote. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy that. Three and three quarters. This is our middle. Oops. That's our center front. Thank you for the follow. Is that right? Like, another great way to do this is just to take this, cut this out, and like fold it on top of itself. Because sometimes doing math is stupid, and why would you want to? <laughs> oh my god, all of you are making these faces. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just amused now. Um, okay, so that's the mirror center front, and we can just do like half this pattern. But I think what's really important tonight, let's just this is the waist, right? The front waist, um, and we're gonna come up with like an aesthetic because we're making this skirt that is shaped like, you know, one of these guys. So we need to divide the front up aesthetically. Yeah, I know, I do the folding a lot, um, but I did the math already, so I may as well just do it. So typically you don't wanna have the front panel be really narrow. It makes your hips look really weirdly like, you got two weird big side pad things in the, it's a weird look. You kind of want the front panel to be either like even or a little bit bigger. Um, this is one of my favorite rulers, it's true, it's a great one. Um, so three and a half, uh, or sorry, three and three quarters. And I'm just gonna kind of arbitrarily decide that I want to do it at two inches. And again, this is just kind of actually an arbitrary decision I'm making. same over here okay oops wrong wrong side hello that was dumb sorry that's not the right thing two inches from this line someone's like aggressively washing their hands which is great but it's really loud <laughs> all right I've divided our front skirt panel up and I'm going to cut it out now. I'm going to use this guy for this. Sometimes I'm going to use the scissors just because. Um, no particular reason. This is just easier to cut when I don't want to go all the way to the edge and it's a pain. Get rid of this paper a little bit right now. And I'm gonna cut off this one side panel. Um, we only need to really do one side of this. So I'm gonna cut these guys off and I'm just gonna call this side panel. Side panel. And this is, this was our center front line. It's just CF, that's a really terrible F, but that's what this says, I swear to God. Okay. I know, it's a very chill sound. Um, so, our sweep is 40 inches total. Um, let me figure out how many inches we need to add total to the total um garment and like i said i'm going to add a little bit more to the back than i am the front so i'm going to go ahead and divide the sweep up hmm time to meditate on this a little bit so these are some of the decisions that you end up having to make as a designer and this is just purely like decision making um the back is a little bit smaller than the front in terms of the waistband size so Dividing this evenly might actually be okay. So if I did 20 and 20, it might come out okay. I and mean, then it might be a thing that you have to end up going back in and changing it a little bit, so. Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. I, like I said, um, it's fun to see my like regular viewers come in and be a little bit like, what's happening? <laughs> you guys don't know, it's okay. Um, so, we're gonna do 20, 20. 
and sorry this is like all a lot of patterning that's flat patterning it's just a lot of math if you don't like math I don't recommend learning how to pattern <laughs> and it's a lot of uh, fractions and I have to make some decisions now Ooh, thank you for the follow think about this um uh, I need, you might need a calculator. <laughs> Let me bring the calculator app up. Hmm. Okay, so 20 minus. Actually, I'm going to divide 20 into 4, which is 5 inches, right? Right. So. Yes, that makes good sense. All right, I just divided this up into 4 because this is going to be. These are like essentially four sections. And so that's gonna be five inches that we need to add into each of these sections. Um, this one's a little bit smaller. These ones are a little bit smaller than this one and that's fine, I don't, I'm okay with that. We wanna keep this, the narrowness at the top when we go to spread all this nonsense out. So, so we're, gonna, we're gonna end up doing is taking these pieces and adding five inches into them. And how am I going to do that? Well, good question. Eat. There's a lot of also folding and cheating as far as like this goes. It's like too much, too much work to sit here and do. Oh my god, donation hype. <laughs> so unnecessary. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate you. So what I'm doing is I'm just like folding some sections into this so I have like kind of evenly spaced. And I'm gonna draw them out so you can actually see them instead of just me cheating and being lazy pants. They're all half inch, I don't know why. I'm acting like they're not. Cause this is two inches, two inch strip. Take care of yourself. Okay, so that's my side panel. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my scissors because it's a little easier when it's like something that's skinny. It's really funny because I, I took a math class in high school that actually taught you how to do that kind of, of math like geometry using like folding or using a compass to find things like that. I've never really had a class like that except for one time. It was really interesting. So I'm just going to tape this guy down one edge and then we're going to add in some of that five inches we talked about. Okay. So one and a third inch, I'm gonna go one and a half, I guess. Sounds like a reasonable number. One of these is gonna be a little smaller than the others, and that's okay. And that's one and a half at the bottom. And I'm just gonna tape that down. Sorry if that's a little off camera. So you see a little line there? That's at one and a half from here. Hopefully that's pretty clear. And like this is not an exact science, so 
some of this stuff you're going to be like, you're going to finish your pattern and you're, that's why you do a test muslin when you finish your pattern and go, you know what? I hate it. Thanks. And then you have to redo it. And that's fine. It's totally normal. And I probably could have cut this out earlier and it would probably be a little easier. I don't like to make things easy on myself, apparently. Okay, so that one was one and a half. I'm gonna do this one one three quarters and the last one at uh, Thank you for the follow. One and a half, two. Okay. That's gonna not really a hundred percent average out, but it's it's so true. Like, I have to tell you, like, literally a lot of patterning is just a lot of, like, trial and error. Um, it might come out perfect the first time, but don't get mad if it doesn't. I'm going to also take down this side a little bit because it's popping up and looking weird. Stay down. And I'm, I'm also going to just go ahead and cut this while this is loose and try and simplify a little bit. And you're going to have to redo your grain line after you've done this. And I'll show you the way I like to find my grain line. Once we get this going. You know, if I was smart, I would realize that I could probably get both sides of this with one piece of tape. Oh well. Oh wow, it works. Okay. And then one and a half on this side. So this isn't exact, um, exactly five inches we're adding in, but it's close. It's close enough. This is three, four, if I wanted to, I could add three quarters over here, then it would be five, she said. Would it? It might be. I don't. Yes, that would be five, right? Look, I figured it out. <laughs> I figured out a way to do it. God, doing math. We did it. And now we're going to connect the dots essentially. Um, and when you do this, what you are doing is creating a lot of bias in these side pieces now. So you probably are going to need to shorten these end bits. I'm going to shorten them by what's an eighth of an inch here. What would be like a quarter of an inch in the actual pattern. Handy dandy. Curve. See a really cute little like half size ball skirt. Again, this doesn't have any seam allowance on it. You would go back in and add that in as your very last step. Um, when you're still testing a pattern, you can just lay the pattern down and then trace out seam allowance around it. If you're still working on it. And we're also gonna smooth the waistline. Tape that down a little bit. So it kind of looks like a mess on this side, right? It's more like a pattern on that side, right? Less distraction. 
And this was yours to your side seam. So this would be two front. Two front. And if we were doing notches on this, I would do a single notch on this piece somewhere. It's a notch, and on this piece, I would do two notches because that would go towards the back. So the further back on the, the body you get, the more notches you put. So like the back pattern piece could have like four notches. Traditionally speaking, it just keeps it nice and organized and easy to remember that way. Um, and then grain line, I would take this again and fold it in half because you typically want the grain line to kind of go straight down the middle of the pattern piece. questions does that make sense this is my side piece we still got to do center front but you can already see like where we are going with this right does that make sense it's starting to look like a thing No frame of reference. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure that like the idea and the concept of how we got to this place from here. Um, hey, so yeah, we'll add, we'll be adding in t essentially ten inches total to the center front. We would do half like that, five inches on the side and five inches on the side. Um, and the reason I've kept center front as like one solid piece, it's nice to visualize like what's happening here because this could get really big and weird looking and we'd be like, ooh. But I have a hard time personally visualizing when it's a half piece, like what exactly is happening here sometimes. So I like to see the center front um, as one solid piece when I'm working with something that's a little like weirdly hard to visualize myself. If it's just like, a square rectangle that's fine like you don't really need it as much but I think it's really helpful to have um, this kind of visualization for myself anyways so okay this guy let's also divide it up because we can And we're going to have to divide the center front up a little more than we divided it up. Because like I said, we would need to add it in to more places. Like, you know, when you were a kid and you would make, like, fans out of paper. It's a lot like that. And I'm going to see if I can measure this piece and be like, how wide is this? Okay, I can measure that. And just use that as my guide for the rest of them. Hopefully it'll be evenly distributed. And you might want to, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you might want to, um, you might like ask why. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this right. Um, why not just like cut it in the middle and just add all the space in that one slot? It's gonna give you a really weird pattern shape if you do that. So you want to kind of like slot in. Um, a percentage and then if you were just to like cut it in the middle and just it's you're gonna have like weird you're not gonna have a good like smooth curve um, so it's like evenly distributed as you can I like to do no less than like four pieces essentially it doesn't have to be perfect um, like perfectly evenly distributed but it is nice to get it as close to that as possible 
and it's always what we're aiming for is as close as possible to that most noble goal okay so i've just divided this up it's not like i said perfectly even and that's okay and now i'm gonna start cutting this up and we just call this slash and spread when you're talking about patterning um this is how you make puppy sleeves if you just want them to be puffy at like the bottom of the sleeve you take the regular sleeve you cut it up and then you pivot essentially the same way we're doing with these or like this would be the top of your sleeve and you just want puffy down here you would do this if you want the whole sleeve puffy you would spread them all out like you want the top puffy and you want to gather that you want to spread out the area that you want to be gathery spread that area out like just in lines and then connect those top dots and stuff so it's just a a, a, a like a, a method of patterning it is applicable in other ways it's not just for making skirts with full hem this is just a good way to add volume to any part of a pattern and one second i'm gonna get yeah same way to make puppy sleeves i'm gonna get that's not it. Sorry. I'm looking for a colored pencil of some sort. I have so many normally. But of course when I want one. Oh, this is fine. I just want to do the center front line. Because like once I get adding all this volume, it might be hard for me to tell. I just want to do it in a different color. Look, I found a copper pen. That works. cutting ASMR. Ugh, it's like hard for me to cut at that height. This table is meant for mostly like standing work and it's still a little bit low for that for me but it's also like too because I'm tall. It's also like a little too high for me to just sit here and do this stuff. My elbows are like up under my chin practically on a regular height chair. If I was on a stool it'd be fine but I'm not is what it is. I wish I had time. I was gonna buy a little half-sized dress form so I could like dress up a dress form for you guys when this was done and show you what it looks like but sad but true facts I was not able to get one. They're actually pretty fucking expensive. Um, there is like a pattern I found in make your own and that's just like with all the other things going on that I had going on I was like I don't have time for that um, but I, I might do it for the future for other events. Use a cat or dog. I don't have a pet. There's just the strays. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slashes. We're adding 10 inches, right? So calculator. Well, like one and a half ish, a little bit less than. So I'm going to go, what is one and three eighths? Because I don't need the front to be super full. We were discussed why we don't want the front to be super full. This three eighths. Yeah. Um. That's fine, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna do one and three eighths. One point three seven five. Five times seven. It's gonna be yeah nine nine and then like half. That's fine. So three eighths. I need paper. I'm running out. Get 
I'm going to try and be smart this time and just tape down both sides. One. This tape is definitely wide enough to do that. And these are much skinnier strips anyway, so. Okay. Hello. Where did I put my cap? My handy dandy ruler. Um. God, my brain is shot. It's been a long day, guys. It's been a long week. Okay, one and three. It's I was making sure. So, oops, just snap that off. One and three eighths. Actually, since this is all the way up here, boop, I can live there now. This piece heck off, thank you. <laughs> it's making it hard for me. I didn't cut this all the way up is the problem. My oh my fuck. Way to startle the shit out of me. Who whomst was that? You don't know who that was. Hefe! Yes, I fixed it, Hefe. <laughs> he was complaining that it wasn't working earlier. <laughs> We don't want wrinkles, so if I get a wrinkle, then I need to straighten it out. And clearly, I have made a mistake. There we go. Alright, same deal. One and three eighths. One and three eighths. Oops. Oh, you'll be able to make a skirt for yourself. You will be the most beautiful, don't you know? Haven't you always wanted to make a gourd skirt for yourself? And it's funny because like, if you Google like a gourd skirt tutorial, um, they're much more geared towards kind of like a more fitted one so the top of the skirt doesn't get flared out, just the bottom. And so it's a little different in a lot of these tutorials. So this is helpful in the way that it's definitely geared more towards a Lolita aesthetic. And the kind of silhouette we are actually going after. Kind of like, ooh, did I get enough paper here? Might not. <laughs> Might have to go get more paper and tape it on. That's okay. It won't be the prettiest, but it'll be fine. Um, not a good day insertion. What you would do instead is um cut down like you you know what a sloper looks like for a skirt. Most people here don't, but you do. So your skirt sloper would be like this with your your dart in here somewhere. Usually it's a one dart. Kind of this shape, right? Like this is what your sloper looks like, kind of. Something like that, right? So typically for a gourd skirt, like typical pattern, what they want you to do is to like cut down and then draw a straight line down like based on center front from here and then cut the this out as like a princess seam and then use this to make your um your gores in from here so it's not quite a go day i mean you could certainly do a go day in here instead um but this is that's they tend to start out more like and they just they're like that's your gore like it, it technically that is a gore skirt if you just do a princess seam it's technically gore already but that's getting a little like really really nitty gritty technical <laughs> Um, and then that's that, but that's typically what you see in a lot of patterning books when you're looking into like how to make a gourd skirt. That or they'll do like just a really quick, much narrower version than this. 
Um, this one would be wide enough um, to have that really full wide sweep. So if you're trying to figure out like how wide of a sweep you really want for a Lolita skirt, um, you can always measure the existing garment. The only thing to be careful of is that like you don't want um, like the, the thing you really kind of want in an A-line Lolita dress though is that you do want it to be kind of smooth um, and not get like really gathery at the bottom like the way a circle skirt looks. Um, so you don't want too full. It's really like a careful balance. It's really hard to strike. Ta -ta. But yeah, um, Kat and I went to the same pattern making school. She's still going. I quit <laughs> because I'm lazy. No, I got a job in the industry and I, I was happy enough with where I was going. Um, at the time would be worthwhile to go back. I don't, I don't say that it wouldn't be there a great school. So if you're in the Bay area, um, we can definitely recommend a great place to learn. That's definitely where I picked up these skills. Uh, but like I said, I never finished. So it's nice to have the book. Oops, that's a little too far up. Sorry. Cause sometimes I need to go back in and like check myself and be like, wait, how do I do that? Wait, what? Yes, it's true. There is a pattern making school here called um, Apparel Arts. Um, they are a trade school, so you get a certificate when you finish. Um, and it is really lovely. The owner is a wonderful, wonderful woman. It is women owned. Um, her name is Susie. She's very supportive. Um, because there is fashion industry jobs in the Bay Area. Yeah, um, but like it's really funny because like Jessica and me and a couple of other people who like actually do fashion <laughs> jobs are like, why would you want to do this? We're always like, I don't understand what's wrong with you. We're just making a joke though. It's, it's a tough industry. Yeah, I saw, I saw some of her posts on some of that. And again, same deal with taking one eighth off here. Uh, I'm gonna have to add more paper over there because clearly I done goofed a little bit, but that's fine. I'm just gonna, because I'm gonna cut this out so I have more paper to add. I need to go ahead and at least make this side look right. And in fact, the, the curve that I'm using is actually from that school. Um, and I highly recommend it as much, one of my favorite French curves I've ever come across. I still use it. Okay. Cut you off somewhere over here. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna have to come back and add more in. It's so true. Yeah, if you just want to take some classes, like it's not, they're, they're not cheap classes, but they're not like, you know, college expensive. So it's a really great way to learn. Um, I, I love them. They're wonderful people. They're very supportive. And if you just want to learn how to pattern for patterning's sake, I would definitely choose that over like going to like a college for, and honestly, if you do want to do it for work too, I would still recommend them over going to college. I don't think you need a college degree to do pattern making. Sorry, I'm a little off the camera here because, yeah. Bye. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I got crappy tape and I have regrets. <laughs> But I bought a bunch of it, so now I'm stuck with it. No, no pun intended about that part, but. Yeah, I'm just like, tape it all down. That's super true. We just love to tape shit. It's true. Okay, so now with this mess, I'm just gonna. Goodbye.
goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. All right, and I don't need all this excess. There. And what do we do? Okay, so I'm just gonna trim this part out for realties. the waistline here and then I'm going to use this guy to give me my beautiful hemline. So I did it on the other side. Okay. That might be a little sloppy looking but there you go. So this would be my front pattern. Side front, center front. Again, this is now my new green line here. And I would just trace this off to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, so like if you wanted to have a high waist skirt. Okay, um medium I would go with. You could just make a really wide waistband and have a waist connect, but I'm assuming you're talking about the kind that like would like go up like from here is that what you're talking about like that's a real classic look Blech. my really terrible quick drawing <laughs> that is that what we're talking about there yeah um medium medium difficulty it's not super hard um what I would do if this is what I wanted is I would start out with um, a princessine bodice pattern um, and I would so like mm, mm, I'm like do I have one handy uh, okay well I'm just gonna sketch one out real quick and like I love these kind of questions because honestly like I think I've demonstrated the principle enough that you guys could do the back if you wanted to, right? I don't feel like I need to do the front and the back. I would do both sides, yes, if I was going to do the whole pattern. Um, but I would much rather like address like curiosities like this that, that she's talking about here. So like this is my very vague princess pattern. Princess theme pattern. It's a really terrible version of it, but let's pretend. Okay. Right? Princess seam pattern. What I would do is it was measure up like how high I wanted this nonsense to be. Um, like however high up you want the center front to be and then like how, cause like you might want it to dip up in the front. You might want to like make a sweetheart version of this waistband. However you want that to be. I would start out by doing that. Um, and I would, use the like however high up you want it to I want it like three inches up or whatever I'm just gonna come up with an arbitrary measurement on this piece and I would do the same thing over here like whatever those pieces are and I would use these pieces and then I would just draw straight down and then I would take whatever the waistline is and I would cut it off from there and just draw straight down or whatever but I would cut off where the waistline is wherever that was. So I, you'd have to take your ha your seam allowance off the bottom of this pattern piece. Um, if you're using like a commercial pattern you're doing this from. But just draw straight down, cut the, the seam allowance off, and then I would take this elongated piece that we created just now and I would cut it off and then I would do this and then you've got this like weird curve going on up here. Yes, that's okay though. What you're gonna do is then take this and like you've got Say a flat pattern piece you're gonna try and work this back into. I don't remember this was two inches right? This was two inches. Uh, two inch pattern piece that you're trying to work this back into. Straight on the bottom. So let's line this baby up and like find where the grain line is because they're typically in the middle straight up and down like we talked about. Same deal here. This is the grain line. And I wouldn't worry about this too much in the middle. That's fine. It doesn't, you don't need to worry about the curve of the waist at this point. And just tape this buddy on here now. 
and these are now best friends. <laughs> they exist together, and that's your pattern piece. Um, and that would also work like you want to do like a whole A-line JSK that has like one seamless top and bottom, same deal, same exact thing, except you wouldn't obviously cut off the top of the pattern. Does that make sense? And are there more questions along those lines? Because, like, I, I think, yeah, no problem. Um, I think, like, I've got another mm, five-ish minutes. We, we started a little bit late. So, like, ten-ish minutes of where I'm supposed to be streaming. But I am here. There's no other streams after us. You're welcome to ask me questions. So now's the kind of time I would open up to answering questions. So this will be your pattern. And I hope that was, like, real easy to visualize and understand how it works. And you can also ask me just like general questions <laughs> about whatever you want. I'm here to answer questions about sewing and other troubles of indie life, indie designer life, and you might have curiosities, questions. Um, but yeah, so Q and A time for for fashion design questions. <laughs> And also, like, feel free to give me some feedback um, on the whole event or some major itself. Like, if you guys have any questions or, like, thoughts on how we could improve. Oh, okay. So, this is your center front skirt panel. This is your side panel. So, do I have? I'm, not, I'm just, you would have to add seam allowance. I'm not going to really do it. Demonstrate some scrap muslin around here. I'm sure I've got some. I'm pretty sure I can throw this together in a few seconds. What's the grain line? Okay, grain line. These are all important questions. Here's your piece of fabric. It's a mess. The grain line is the is parallel to the selvage, which is this edge of the fabric that runs along the length of the fabric. I know this is a really wrinkly ass piece of fabric, but this came off the bolts and this is the self edge of the selvage and a grain line just tells you which way to cut the fabric. So you always make sure that line is parallel on the uh, side of the fabric essentially. So it's a really helpful tool for telling somebody which direction to cut something. Like if you were to get something made in a factory, that is one of the ways we communicate with our factory, how to do things. I'm just gonna cut this out really quick and then just slap it together. And I didn't walk this pattern, which is important to do, but it should be pretty close. She said, <laughs> should be. Hashtag famous last words. Thanks so much for tuning in, Kat. I know you're here, here frequently. We're not just a sometimes viewer. I always appreciate you dropping by and saying hello. And thanks to anybody who's like watching from the East Coast. I know it's really late for you guys. It's really funny because I did a I did a, a thing for Paradiso last week and it was like super early. Uh, there is a cha there is already a list. It's on my website, theblackribbon.com. It's the first post. So, I'm gonna go sew these together real quick so you can see them. I think my machine's threaded. This is gonna be interesting. If I can, <laughs> there's like it's very awkward because the camera is sitting on my chair, so I can't sit down
almost got it together. Did one theme. Gotta do the other. front of a skirt. Now, does that make sense? Like that's, these are the three pieces that we, we made. And this would be the front of your skirt. You just need to make another half. We didn't pattern the back, but like those same principles would make the back of your skirt. Does that make sense? Your little tiny doll sized skirt. All right. I know, I had to get up so early for some of Paradiso stuff. Uh, the Purgatorio stuff was awful. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, just making sure that was like super clear on how what we did today worked into a skirt. And I think like that's a pretty good like Lolita fullness if this was like a little tiny human. <laughs> like a little tiny half size human. I think this is a really good fullness for that. And I'm sorry this camera, like I said, jumps a little bit. Um, it's old, it's fallen a lot of times, so. But yeah, so last, any last questions I can help with? Um, the same principles that we did to do this except for remember in the beginning we talked about the back measurement and this is this 20 inches is how much wow I can't write today because it's been a long day how much to add so this is the 20 inches is how much you need to add to the bottom of the like the overall okay Yes. What is the difference between gourd skirt and a flared skirt? Gourd skirt means that it has multiple panels in the front. Um, often, some people will say that a gourd skirt, usually the gores are technically usually fairly even. Obviously, we didn't quite do that with this one. Um, a flared skirt just means it goes out. And that could be like an A-line skirt is technically flared. Um, you could do, and this could technically be a princess theme flared skirt. This is like getting into like weird technology, like technical nitpickiness. Um, you can just flare it a little bit, but yeah. Gores just means it has like these different, each one of these is considered a gore. Um, so this, I would probably, if I just had these pieces, probably would make a separate waistband. Um, and then I would, um, which I, you could just do a straight waistband, it should be okay. And then put buttons on it and then make a strap, yeah, that's what I would do. A separate, separate waistband. Just gonna, just gonna get some fabric. And pretend. Okay, this is not it's too big. It's too much fabric, but so yeah, we'll just take a separate look this is nice. This is a good size. Make a separate waistband. That's what I would do. Well thanks so much for boy cells. Yeah, I would I would just make a separate waistband, probably like no bigger than two inches wide. Uh, so you need to have a front and a back and your seam allowance. Um what I would do. Two inch wide waistband. Maybe a little smaller, maybe an inch and a half. This is how big two inches is in real life. So it can be a little, could be a little wide, could be acceptable. Um, inch and a half, about here. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Any other last questions I can help with? I know I get asked like making how to make an alien skirt a lot. This is a, this is a problem. 
a lot of like Lolita patterns don't really cover that and like it's really hard to alter it to fit you if you don't already start out with your own waist measurements because if you just add to the side you're gonna get some weird shaping like we talked about because you're not um, adding it evenly distributed throughout the garment so if you have to resize that pattern if you're only if like you're only adding like a half inch to each side so you can overall one inch whatever like that's fine but if you're trying to make like a tiny brando pattern <coughs> excuse me because a lot of these you can't do a shearing panel on um because you, you don't want that gathering you want the whole point of an a-line is to be nice and smooth um so they start out really small and fitted so it can be really hard if you're trying to go from like a 22 inch waist to a 33 inch waist that gets already 12 you know sorry 11 inches that's a big difference so <clears throat> would you have to attach anything oh thank you this is my husband's collection i just help make sure it stays clean i dust it a lot um have i ever tried any of the otome no sewing patterns i haven't because i do all my own patterns for the most part um and again i have an issue of being very tall um bustier than a lot of who those books are made for so they don't work that well for me so it's like as much work to have to rework them as it is just to start from scratch for me so i don't usually um to add a zipper you could, would just put it in the in the side seam i would do an invisible zipper um so no you don't have to do anything else extra to put a zipper in Or you can even do a center back seam. That would be okay too. Instead of leaving this closed, this is like pretend this is the back. You could just chop this down the middle, add seam allowance, and that would be good enough. Um, so you guys know what I mean when I say add seam allowance. Is that is that do I need to explain that really quick? I'm not saying no, so I think we're, we understand what seam allowance means. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I think this was pretty straightforward, and I know it's a complicated style that a lot of people, I think, struggle with trying to do on their own. A lot of people know how to do a rectangle skirt, um, and a lot of people know how to do a circle skirt, but yeah, this, this style, which is, you know, classic from classical Lita styles, like, very traditional, like, Mary Magdalene, Victorian made in like those classic brands that we think of when we think of classic Lolita. They've all done this type of dress like once or twice and you don't see a lot of those patterns come out and I think it's a little hard for people so I wanted to be sure I covered that. <coughs> hey Megan! It's good to see you. Um, but yeah. Some people maybe don't though so I'd like to just double check my terms because you know had to cover what the green line was and I think that's a very important term to know so okay well I think that's everything for questions um so I think I'm gonna wrap this up again if you guys have any feedback for me about how the event went and how the other panels were I would love to hear about it feel free to DM me on Facebook feel free to DM me on Instagram anywhere you can DM me here email whatever i would love to know what you thought um because we would try to do maybe one or two more of these while we're still on lockdown and while we're trying to keep socially distanced um i think it went wonderfully you guys have been a wonderful audience i've enjoyed watching you guys interact with all the other channels today i've been lurking around so thank you so much for participating and hopefully i'll see you the next one of these i do and if you have a topic suggestion, also throw that at me. I would love to know what you guys want to learn about so I can keep keep on keeping on. I think the next one I think I wanted to do was how to add a side seam pocket to a skirt. So thank you again. Appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. And I'll see you guys at the tea tomorrow, right? Hopefully, yes. Tea time. And I'm out of here. I'm going to go lie down <laughs> and have some tea of my own.